front as well, with us throwing back the German offensive in Eastern Prussia. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Just want to thank each and every one of you for all the awesome support on this great War Mod series. I've had some really fantastic comments. The feedback's been brilliant. So, thanks guys. I need to say this more often, but yeah, I wouldn't be where I am. Uh, where I am as a YouTuber without you guys' support, so thank you. I really appreciate everything you've done for me. All right, let's get stuck into the campaign. I'm, I'm having so much fun with this campaign as well. It's been an absolute blast. Literally, the field artillery has just been absolutely destroying French military assets left, right, and center, and we are doing so well as the Germans on the Western Front. Oh, Britain declares North Sea military area. Okay, so that means they're going to just start absolutely ruling the waves and trying to destroy any ships in their territorial waters. I wonder if that's a threat because the German Navy is nearby. Okay, so back over in the east, we do have more artillery and units being recruited because we do have the financial capacity now and we can upgrade our military buildings here as well. I do want to try and get better quality artillery on the eastern front. We can actually afford to invest on the eastern front now due to the amount of money we've managed to gain from taking Reims and, well, previously Belgium before. But we're going to make our second attempt to retake Brussels, but man, rebellions in this game are so harsh. It's um, a little bit annoying. But look, I I've mentioned this before. I don't mind rebellions. It's just that it annoys me when they spawn an army that was better than what Belgium originally had <laughs> at the start of this. But we should be able to take them out with ease now. Uh, I am nearly tempted to liberate, but I think we just need to be a little bit slow and methodical in approach. It's just because of the divisions between the Catholic and Protestant sectors in Belgium. So we might just need to keep a garrison there before we march on uh, into southern France. We just need a bit slower in our capturing and conquering. The Battle of the Falklands. Fierce fighting has broken out in... South America, just south of Argentina. Oh, wow. Okay, we've had another rebellion here. A rebellion? <laughs> that's what we're going to call it now. A rebellion in Belgium. I guess that's that's a brilliant... That's a brilliant machination of words here. What's that, a rebellion? No. It's not a rebellion. It's a rebellion. <laughs> oh, God, that's stupid. Anyway, we've got the Christmas truce going on and we're going to get rid of the Belgians. <laughs> we're going to get rid of Belgium military forces on Christmas Day. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I wouldn't put it past the Kaiser. It's late December now. Uh, 1914 still. And we're both still fighting with pretty early um, military equipment and tactics. The war hasn't changed overly too much just yet. Because between like, what is it, 1915 to 16, the war changed to tanks and gas and U-boats and stuff. So it's, it's crazy to see how, like, the war started and how it ended in the end. So, oh, looks like they're just attacking me here. Well, good. They have no self-preservation. They're just suicide into me. We'll get rid of them. Perfect. Hopefully, that's the last amount of rebellions. Dude, they've spawned three full stacks here. It's kind of mad. Got to give it to them. They're giving us a hell of a fight. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to leave here soon. All right, back over in the east, the Russians are pushing in winter. Look at that, man. The amount of attrition they're getting as well. But we've already destroyed two armies here. We're just turtling up in East Prussia. But what I'd like to see in this campaign, like, what, what would it be awesome is having, like, other world theaters, you know, like around the world. Oh, what's this? Join war against the kingdom. Am I technically not at war with them? Or maybe they've come back? I don't know. They haven't been conquered just yet. Um, I'll join the war if you give me some tech for it, Austria-Hungary. But yeah, the point I was making, you forget how many other theatres the war. 
is going on in um, World War One, especially in Africa. It's actually insane. Okay, so I actually think the Turks are going to give us some more tech. Well, I'm definitely going to accept that then. Like, we're so far away from Serbia, it just doesn't matter. Alright, so another Russian army's come up here. We should be able to absolutely decimate it in this interception. But you forget, Germany has so many overseas colonies. Like, there's like, isn't there like South West Africa? Uh, don't they, don't, didn't they have like modern Kenya and stuff? Alright, back over on the Western Front. I'm ready and I'm mobilized an offensive of Paris. So, we currently have three full stacks ready to push against the French capital to try and claim the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe. And hopefully, the Germans, for the Kaiser, can take it. We do have two full stacks in reserve in Reims, Champagne, and back in Brussels, Belgium as well. The Crown Prince, along with the Butcher of Bavaria, is with him. And we've got the Duke of Württemberg uh, garrisoning Brussels as well, which seems to have come firmly under our control after a couple... a little bit of Catholic resistance more than anything. All right, back over here now. The Russians have managed to bunker in after winter, and I think it's time for an Eastern Front autumn offensive. Now, thanks to getting more funds for the war machine in Brussels and Reims, we were actually able to recruit better quality artillery on the Eastern Front. So we're going to be able to make a charge here with Maximilian, and we can change up our army build slightly as well. We've been quite passive and calm. We've been flying reconnaissance planes over Lithuania, over Latvia, and Minsk. Um, and we've just been identifying any Russian forces that come into East Prussia. And we've been decimating them as well. Which has been good. And now we've thrown another army out there. Alright, I think it's time for the Siege of Paris. Let's march on in. And... We can't demand the surrender. This is going to be near the... Uh, once everyone gets in, a 10,000 man... Oh, okay. It's like... Uh, so that's... That's 9,700-ish. Okay, we've got more infantry coming as well. We're going to have a crazy, a massive, an epic 10,000-man battle for Paris. For Paris. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys as well. Actually, in East Prussia, we've unlocked the recruitment of super heavy siege artillery, which is awesome. So we've got some of the best artillery coming out of East Prussia now due to those investments. Um, Self-determination we're currently going into, along with rifle scopes and heavy mortar capabilities and replenishment as well. So we're getting to the stage we might be able to get mid-tier artillery pieces, which would be fantastic. But anyway, I've been wanting to play this one. Let's have the Battle for Paris. 1915. Still firmly under French control. The Germans make the assault for the French capital. Alright, unfortunately it's currently pouring down with rain in Paris. And we've actually hit that I've been wanting to do for a while. Get my peak, optimal, army build. A full-on artillery doom stack. <laughs> so... We currently have, what is that, 3, 6, 9, I don't even know how much, 13 pieces of field artillery, and then a siege uh, cannon as well. We've only got one unit of cavalry, which is better than nothing. I'm not even recruiting cavalry at the moment, we're just going on a full-on howitzer construction artillery doctrine blitzkrieg in the recruitment-wise. Uh, we've only got five units as well. That should be enough to stop any cavalry or anything charging at my position. But hopefully and ideally, we should be able to absolutely annihilate, obliterate, vaporize anything that comes near us. And already, these big bad puppies are in range. They don't have the best reloader capacity. 
the heavy artillery here. But they've got the range and the firepower. And I can't wait to see what the, sevi, the, the super heavies look like as well. Looks like we're going to be testing them out against the Ruskies, though, before we get to in France. But you got to give it to the French. They've given us a hell of a fight this series. Look, I thought the adoption of... Well, we're doing it a bit earlier, but of the Blitzkrieg and... The Schlieffen plan would have made the capitulation of France through Belgium a lot quicker, but fierce resistance has broken out. I'm actually going to advance with my infantry here, just looking at the terrain. There's actually a bit of a choke point there, brilliantly. Due to the topography of the battle map, we can probably move up slightly. We've actually been quite lucky that there's some narrow corridors here. And... It's actually going to make really good use of our limited infantry capacity now that I've opted to go for artillery. So we're going to have to slightly move. I'm surprised they're actually not in range because every other fight we've had in this series, my artillery has been in range from the get-go. Potentially the French know about our... Well, they bloody know now about our artillery doctrine, but in this fight, they, I guess they sat back and were like, okay, we're going to need to if we're going to survive this one. So we'll move up a couple hundred yards... And then once we're in position, we shall unlimber and then try and go for another decent amount of ollies. So, ollie fire at will, yep. And it does look like the artillery is in range. Give them hell, boys. Oh, my God. Continue on the shelling. And already, if you look at the battle map there, that's nearly the entire army getting hit at least. That's fantastic. Alright, let's go and have a look at the French position. How are they holding? Oh, a little bit of foliage protection, maybe even a bit of ground here. Oh my god, we've managed to knock out nearly half percent of them, but carnage is the word that comes to mind that's just been hit on the French position here. As we've further expanded upon our artillery capacity. <laughs> and we've neutralized theirs at the back. Oh my god. This is like 95% in our favor. Crazy. Giving Wilhelm the air the command. Now there is a way. I'm pretty sure if you press insert on your keyboard you can look. I thought, what's the button? I need to figure it out. There's. I'm pretty sure there's a button in the Great War mod and in Napoleon that you can like follow the bullets. Of stuff. They have that in... I thought it's insert. They, or maybe it's home or something. I don't know. They have it in Shogun too. And in the, obviously a tiller. It's insert on your keyboard. In the tiller. But so far... It doesn't seem like... The rain and potentially... Treacherous conditions... Have really affected the Germans here. Because we are still... Quite... Calmly and competently continuing to hit the dug in and entrenched French position. Hopefully, Paris, Paris doesn't give up, give us as much resistance as Belgium, but you would imagine that they would. <laughs> the French and their La Resistance. I can only imagine it'd be quite annoying. That actually, like, imagine that was a Like, in Hearts of Iron, they've obviously got the mechanic like that. There goes the last French artillery piece, but yeah, I wonder if they're going to be more encouraged and they get, like, bonuses for resistance. That'd be quite cool. But it's only a matter of time before the last of the French infantry here are going to be no more. They ain't holding on from this. Unfortunately, some of the artillery pieces there are actually clipping the hill. There's like 30 boys cowering behind that rock. I'd be worried about boulders and debris hitting us there. They do have some French cavalry on the left, which seems to be standing, but we are just absolutely making the fields of Paris like craters on the moon. Look at that, man. There's so many of them. Oh, my God. 
there's so much like visual clutter and flashes there. We've got heat rays. We've just got various shrapnel bombardments. We've got rain coming down as well. Oh my god. Right, so it seems to be that only one artillery piece is actually in range. We are hitting them. We've got more of these guys on the east at the moment. We've just been able to... I think there's actually... Larger and more close proximity of cities actually in Prussia than there is in Strasbourg, which probably makes sense. Obviously being previously the Prussian Empire. But, um... Yeah. I, I just sort of was thinking, like, we've actually had more artillery and better quality artillery being recruited in Prussia than we have over here. It just takes a little while for artillery to come from Germany, I guess. Alright, some of these units are in range. I might just charge this, because that's it. Instead of packing up the artillery, moving it across, I think I might just speed things up and save time. I might even get my General, in there are some artillery pieces still hitting it just, but they're out of range. So, although artillery range in this is awesome, <laughs> like you can nearly just go across the whole battlefield, sometimes, depending on how large the battlefield is, they're not always guaranteed to be in range. So, we definitely want to try and get artillery that has crazy range but I'm sure as well as the war goes on other of the allied powers will eventually get better quality equipment oh hang on have I been deceived here slightly oh crap hang on as the French cavalry fights the Germans there's been a couple units pop up there are they hiding in the forest here I don't know where they go. Well, they're there. I... Th hmm. They do have a decent amount. I thought we basically oh, destroyed them. Oh, no. My cavalry's just been melted there. Uh-oh. There's two there. Oh, oh my God. We've actually been caught there. Oh, my God. I've been baited. Oh no. Yikes. I've only got a limited amount of men. I thought they only had two units left. Just looking at the balance of power. Oh shit indeed, boys. There's a couple units hiding in the forest. How pathetic is that? Never expect the French Inquisition. <laughs> oh my god. Where'd they come from? They've full-on gone guerrilla warfare. I kind of respect that, actually. <laughs> okay, I've got some reinforcements coming on here. We're going to actually need them. Oh, thankfully my artillery's in range. Yeah, they were hiding. Bloody dogs. Trickery dogs. Now my um, infantry's getting kind of trashed a bit because they have to trade. Oh, but as soon as they come out of that forest... Playing Robin Hood men in tights back there. And they're getting absolutely smashed by the artillery. Wow. Yeah, there's another one there as well. I don't know if they necessarily outplayed me. I just didn't count how many units there were. That was a... That was it. I was just like... That was like... They just spawned units there out of nowhere. They spawned out of holes in the ground. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> like, out of nowhere. Oh, my God. There we go. Surprise! We're the French. Yeah, oh, now that we can see them, we're just like... Smashing them now that we're identifying them. There's another, yeah, maybe there's more in there. As if they were doing that. That's, that's funny, ass. <laughs> Is there more? Where are these guys coming from? <laughs> oh, you gotta give it to the French. Even in defeat. They're yeah, doing just nonsense. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, there we go. That should be it. 
Oh my, I, I, I'm gobsmacked at that. That they had so many hide in that little forest. Feed the guns, buy national war bonds. Alright. Oh my god, we just trashed them big time. And the field cannons, getting a couple hundred each is always perfect. And now Paris has capitulated. These, uh, Paris has fallen to the Kaiser. We're going to have to exempt them from tax, and we're going to have to repair these buildings as well. Because the last thing we want is huge and consistent rebellions in Paris. That could really bog us down. But, what is this? Episode 3? It's we've been playing about a couple of hours today, so... Or so far in the campaign. It's, um... Been quite hard to take Paris. We've had to destroy, oh, pfft, I don't know, five French full stacks, and then because of our issues in Belgium, we've had to, well, deliberately, like my my issue that I caused in Belgium with the rebellions, we destroy another three. Okay. Right. Um, we might want to try and. That's the thing. As we start taking territory, we want to try and root out the French navy. Because we want to make sure these ports are under our control so we can get trade going and flowing. Alright, we're looking good. Every single day we're going to be able to bring more reinforcements to Paris. As we look to bunker and lock down the city. So we've pushed on over the huge trench that would have been from like... Where was it? It was it was like from the north, from Calais or whatever. Like it actually went right down to Strasbourg near sort of Switzerland and stuff. Uh, the Russians are still here. Thankfully, we've got a bunch of artillery pieces, and we've got more units coming. We just need to throw them out here from the warehouse again, and we'll continue going. We might be able to have a proper offensive here. We have marched out from East Prussia, but at the moment we've just sort of been battling in and around the fields. Okay, so this will be the third rush, or maybe the fourth, second full stack, sort of fourth army we've destroyed. And look, we're doing well in the east now. We might have enough to actually make a push and a play for a settlement. At the moment, we just haven't had the manpower. Speaking of the manpower, just having a look. Ours has dropped quite a bit, while Russia's, France, and maybe Britain's has grown to some extent. But overall... They still dwarf me in military, outnumbering me three to one. Oh, look at this. Uh, we can actually get trade with Italy. Still currently neutral. I don't know how long that's going to last. Especially with historical... Mm, uh, like AI focuses. Historical focuses is the best way to describe it. Yeah, so they're probably not going to... Yeah, we can't even, like, bring them in at all. I guess that's realistic. Paris Falls. German soldiers. On horseback. Outside the Arc de Triomphe. And looks like French forces have fled back a bit. However, a rebellion seems imminent. Ah, oh, here we go. Italy has attacked Austro-Hungary. Bringing in France and me. Ah, oh, we only just got trade with them as well. <laughs> you give us spaghetti, we give us schnitzels. Pfft, these schnitzels are shit. <laughs> and now we've had a, a rebellion in France. Oh my god. Didn't Boris say something like that? We'll give you Tim Tams, we'll give you penguins, whatever. <laughs> That's what I was thinking and referencing between Australia and Brit Britain. That was last year, talking about trade. Looks like the Tsar isn't really committing full forces now. He's just sort of trickling in, like, small little reconnaissance forces. The Tsar's little green men, I guess. Sending him to do some operations in Prussia. Bloody brilliant. Alright. Let's need to keep an eye on over here. Mm, this is complicated things, because what's that? One, two, three. I think that's three full stacks they've spawned. Ugh, I did give you guys a bit of a warning. The rebellions are incredibly harsh in this. 
But I guess it's realistic as well. You do want to start. It, it is quite hard to conquer modern cities. Just because the amount of potential resistance. And combatants. That are going to arise to fight for the freedom of their city. And to a larger extent their country. The French are no exception. Mm. But so far we're actually like doing quite well and getting rid of them. Right. Let's send you out here. It's actually probably not a bad idea to actually have units that have more manpower to garrison. That order is always bad. In Paris. While well, we have the artillery be the aggressor. It is going down though. As we're getting rid of those rebellion forces. Maybe we just need to do that. <laughs> Maybe to get the public order like back on track. We just need to get rid of the French and destroy them. Destroy their armies. I don't know. Maybe. The order resolves are a bit harsh here. I don't like fighting rebellions manually if I can avoid it. Because I feel like they've cheated spawning them in. I'm going to order resolve. <laughs> it's not like we haven't played a lot of battles against the French. It's the most out of any faction. We probably played five. It's mostly just been between us and... The Russians. The British have l yet to land in France, which is interesting. You'd think they would. And their navy's been quite passive as well. The centenary of the Battle of Waterloo. I wonder... Will that sort of invoke British action on the continent? Here and that, maybe. They might march on over. Okay, um, so I think it's time to put up the taxes a bit. I've actually kept it on normal, normal, because um, I haven't seen a benefit for it. But I reckon we can actually put up the nobility tax quite a bit and actually probably not see too much of a difference. Okay, I've actually got a secondary reconnaissance plane now. A specialized spy to have a look at the rest of France. Now, fighting is sort of cooled off a bit in and around the capital Paris. We are going to make a play for Normandie and try and take Khan. We'll move my spy westward to Brittany as well. So we currently have a full stack in Paris defending. Everything's been repaired as well from the siege and we have two full stacks pushing with the Crown Prince of Bavaria with the two armies now and then we've got Sort of two in reserve further back in Reims and Belgium. So we're still slowly but surely progressing on the Western Front. And we've actually got an opportunity here to intercept the French Navy. They're going to run back. But are we going to be able to fight this one? Actually, look, you know what? I'm going to end the video here. But thank you very much for watching uh, episode three of the Great War mod. Germany campaign. We're going to have a naval battle at the start of the next episode. Yeah, we'll play this one against the French. That'll be a lot of fun. It's not the largest force, so it'll, be a, it'll give us a bit of a test because, honestly, I'm not going to lie and I'm going to admit I'm not the best at naval battles. Um, I just haven't had practice and experience with them. And especially on like very hard difficulty, you can stuff things up <laughs> a lot easier. So maybe I do need to learn. But if they're anything like Napoleon naval battles, we did have a couple in my Napoleon campaign I did as the UK last year. So if they're anything like that, we, we, we should be all right. But anyway, stay tuned for episode four coming out soon where we continue conquering France. And look, we might make an offensive on the... The Eastern Front. I want to try and take some territory. Now that we've got a stronger army built over there, I feel confident that we can try and at least attempt to take some territory. Um, being successful is a, another matter entirely. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for episode 4 coming out tomorrow. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, fellas. Got to play the outro now. 
Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members, Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C, and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.